Hello everyone, this is Harry's movie. In this issue, let's watch the comedy, Stranger Than Fiction. Harold is an auditor of the Internal Revenue Service. His life, dealing with numbers all day, is also as accurate as numbers. For 12 years, his toothbrush will be brushed back and forth 76 times every working day morning. There is always only one style of the tie because it saves 43 seconds. Then he bites an apple and walks through six blocks at a rate of 57 steps per block just in time to catch the bus at 8.17. He goes to bed on time at 11.13 every night. Harold's life is extremely regular but also very lonely. On Wednesday morning, he counts the number of times he brushes his teeth as usual. Suddenly a woman's voice rings in his ear. This voice not only narrates Harold's every move, but also knows his inner thoughts. But Harold can't find the owner of that voice. Even more weird is that only he can hear this voice. Harold can't concentrate under the interference of this voice. He not only misses the bus but also becomes trance at work. In his words, it can be, he feels he is being followed by a woman's voice. So he becomes anxious but can't get rid of it. The IRS audits that Anna's bakery has underpaid 22% of taxes. Harold brings the documents to her bakery and asks to check the accounts. Anna is straightforward and unkind to Harold. But Harold has a heartfelt feeling for Anna. The voice of the narration has already penetrated Harold's mind. Harold can't help but follow the voice's narration. He keeps staring straight at Anna after Anna finds out Harold recoveries and leaves in a hurry. He comes outside the bakery and yells so that the sound can stop disturbing him. The camera changes to a woman with a haggard face and a tired face who squeezes out the cigarette in her hand and jumps off the roof. Fortunately, the tragedy is not real. The scene just now is the plot of a fictional novel by the well-known writer Karen. She is writing a new book, but a long time has passed she still can't find the most satisfactory way for the protagonist in the book to die. Due to Karen's creation bottleneck, she can't finish the draft. The publisher arranges for her an experienced assistant. Here Harold finds his watch stops while waiting for the bus. He finds a passerby for a moment but he hears that voice saying that he is about to die. Harold asks loudly to the sky, but this voice suddenly disappears. Harold rushes into the house angrily and hears the voice to narrate what he is doing. But the voice still doesn't appear. The panicked Harold goes to see the psychiatrist. The psychologist diagnoses his patient with schizophrenia, but Harold feels as if he has become a character in a certain story from the narration. To verify the guess, he goes to find a famous literature professor. The professor suggests that he write down what the narrator said, then live as usual to see if he is a tragic character or a comedy character. Harold meets Anna on the bus. He apologizes to Anna for his frivolity that day. Anna forgives the stupid man in front of her. Harold is nervous and happy so he gets off to the wrong station and has to walk home. Harold goes to Anna's bakery the next day to check the accounts. Anna deliberately messes up the bills of the past three years. Harold really sits down and checks and sorts it out until late. Actually what Anna hates is Harold's status as a tax collector but she doesn't hate Harold himself. She makes cookies for Harold to taste. Harold doesn't like cookies but at Anna's insistence, he has to taste a piece. He didn't expect Anna's cookies to be so delicious. Harold believes that Anna's craftsmanship must have been professionally studied. Anna says she was originally a student of Harvard Law School. Since she discovers her hobby is to be a baker, she drops out of school and starts a better life with her hobbies. Harold admires Anna's courage to chase her dreams. But he stays in his comfort zone and never thinks of changing his routine life. Before leaving, Anna asks Harold to bring cookies home. Harold, the firm man, insisted on buying it with money. Anna looks upset after hearing this. Harold realizes he has messed things up. It seems that he is a character in the tragedy. The professor analyzes that that voice may depend on Harold's actions. The voice will tell the actions depending on what Harold does. If Harold does nothing, then the plot cannot develop and the story ends. Harold obeyed the professor's advice, not going to work, staying at home, not answering the phone, not opening the door, not brushing his teeth. Even peeing is resolved on the sofa. However, the man sits at home but the storyline will take the initiative to come to him. Due to the mistake of the demolition workers, he demolishes Harold's apartment by mistake. The professor thinks that since Harold cannot control his destiny, then it's better to forget everything and live the life he always wants. Harold no longer lives by the rules under the enlightenment of the professor. He goes to buy a guitar, although he plays very stupidly. But he becomes more and more confident in the guitar sound. Harold no longer accurately his digital life, he no longer counts the number of times he brushes his teeth, no longer worries about the time it takes to wear a tie. He stops counting the steps to the bus station, even goes to the cinema to watch a movie, and laughs as no one else is presenting. Harold does what he didn't dare to do before. After breaking the old rules, he finds that life became better. Harold has always been obsessed with Anna, and he is no longer just keeping silent. He brings all his courage to find Anna. He still can't say romantic love words. But that clumsy sincerity moves Anna's heart. Anna invites him to dinner at her house. Harold is no longer rigid and chatting happily with Anna. He even plays the guitar and sings songs. Why should boys learn an instrument? Because this magical skill will help you to show off at a critical moment. Harold has love. He excitedly tells the professor that his life is a comedy. The professor is very happy for him and wants him to live happily. An interview about Karen is playing on TV at this time. 
Harold knows that the narrator's voice is Karen's. The professor says that if it was really Karen, it would be bad. Because Karen is a writer who writes about tragedies, there is no one alive under her pen. Harold panics when he hears that, he finds Karen's phone number through the previous tax bill. He hopes Karen can rewrite the ending of the protagonist. When Karen goes to buy cigarettes, she sees an apple falling on the ground. She is suddenly inspired, she finally thinks of how to design the death of the hero in the book. Karen quickly writes about the development of the plot. When she writes the phone rang, her phone really rings. It is Harold who answered the call, which surprises Karen. When Harold comes to her, she is shocked. This eyebrow, this eye, this hairstyle she doesn't expect the protagonist in the book to be really alive and stand in front of her. Harold asks Karen not to kill him at the end. The complete overlap of real and fictional characters makes Karen feel incredible. She can't change the work that is about to be completed, and the ending outline has been written. When the assistant sees that they are deadlocked, she brings Harold to read the manuscript of the novel. Harold does not dare to see his death, he hands the manuscript to the professor. He hopes the professor will tell him how to avoid death after reading. The professor read Karen's novels all night while Harold stays up nervously. The next day he finds the professor and asks the result. The professor says that Harold must die to make this work a masterpiece. The protagonist dies, but the story goes on forever. But Harold just falls in love and feels the beauty of life, he doesn't want to die now. Harold is sad and he opens the novel manuscript at the meeting and reads his life as a bystander. From 12 years of being as boring as a day to later bravely chasing dreams and doing what he wants to do, Harold becomes calm after watching his death ending. He tells Karen that this is a very moving work and there can only be one ending. Karen looks at Harold's back and hesitates. Harold knows he is going to die the next day, so he finishes the work calmly. He has pastries and pudding made by Anna in the evening. Two people watch an old movie together and spend a very pleasant evening. Harold walks towards the bus stop early the next morning. He already knows that the change in his life is because the time he asked from passes by that day was three minutes later than the actual time. His precise life trajectory is disrupted, and only then does he have the chance to reap love and happiness. Unexpected things happen at this moment. Harold is knocked to the ground by a bus to save a little boy. Although he injures his head, suffers multiple fractures, and ruptures his right artery, Harold is not dead, it is a small piece of the watch blocking the artery that saved his life. It turns out that Karen has changed the end of the novel at the end. She thinks Harold knows he will die and knows how to avoid it, but he still saves people and faces death calmly. This kind of talent should survive. Under Harold's infection, Karen also realizes that she has been lost in the face of hopeless tragedy for too long. She begins to look at life with a positive and optimistic attitude. If our life is a script that has been written, and it's still a mediocre current account, so how many people can get out of their comfort zone and bravely change their destiny? Okay, this is the end of this issue. Friends who like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you next time.